any harm against me will be returned to you tenfold. I don't believe you. <clears throat> all truth is beyond the reach of unbelievers, and all hope is beyond the reach of a fallen emperor. A decade ago, you had the world. Now you only have your flesh and blood, and even that seems ever more fleeting. <laughs> the Lord protects the Empire, protects me. You shall find no pardon before his judgment. You shall... <laughs> Shut up. If anyone is listening up there, they clearly think as little of you as I do. Now why don't you focus on matters of earthly importance for a moment? Tell me why you were here. Because it was not my time to die. But what of Rome? Who did you piss off to make you fear for your life like that? Enemies of Rome even lower in the eye of the Lord than you. Or maybe not. At least they had the guts to come to the capital, not hiding on islands behind comically large shields. <laughs> ah, be quiet. Now I take it you want to live? I know that you will not kill me. If you are a good little dog, you have no choice in the matter. If you dare invoke your ghost friend once more, then I shall reconsider my offer. The offer, which is this, you will write a declaration stating that the Empire can no longer save Rome, and so you have entreated the services of me as its protector. And I will take that role quite seriously, I assure you. Rome will be saved. You will be saved. Can you do anything but agree? <sighs> a moment to consider, if you will. No, take all the time in the world. I'll be going. Bandages and water for you, if you choose to live. If not, well, you will never see this door open again. Try not to overthink it, eh? Hello and welcome back to Fields of Mars. In the previous episode, we saw Tullus and Constans setting out with Aurelius Ambrosius to attack the islands of the Mediterranean, starting at Palma with an easy victory, then moving on to the province capital at Carolus, which proved equally easy to take, even with a port assault against a walled settlement. But the final settlement of Ajax was a little more heavily defended, and that was because it was the hiding place of the Emperor of the Western Roman Empire himself. It was a more grindy and difficult battle, but the legionaries proved their skill at arms once again and were able to overcome the defenders, allowing us not only to capture the town and unify our set of islands, but to capture the Emperor. Now let's continue. So we're here just in the aftermath of that battle at Ajax, and from the results we can see that Constans actually took pretty hefty losses taking the town, the enemy's towers and large numbers of infantry gradually taking their toll on the legionaries who had to put in a lot of hard work there. But since we have captured the place and unified the province, there should now be a pretty good chance to start restoring the troops, especially because we're already building a legionary barracks on one of the islands. So at Ajax we will just occupy the town, so as I said that completes the unification of the Insulae Occidentalis, the islands of the Mediterranean. So we'll need to start getting to work on both fully converting them to Roman paganism, which they're already quite a long way towards already, and preparing our military administration there. It's also time in the next turn to start reassigning offices, so we'll just take a look at how Constantinus assigns his own children into all of the superior offices. We've uh, got Julianus, Ambrosius, Aurelianus, Uther, and Constans, of course, all taking the highest positions available to them, while Tullus actually sits as the master of offices, the highest position below Constantinus in the uh, tree of the administration, so that's good for him and perhaps good for the Senate, and all of the governors and such will be assigned random minor positions just to keep them happy. Now, I actually had a rebellion here during the intern sequence as well, and interestingly, it's a Celtic rebellion, so it seems the local Roman population isn't too unhappy with the fact that we've moved in. It's the Celts who are actually rising up against us, and annoyingly, they've besieged Carolus right away, and it's not the fact that they've got the city under siege that's annoying. It's because they've chosen to do that siege, they're actually not recruiting any more troops. I wanted them to recruit more discontents before we had a battle with them, so that public order would be boosted further by 
delay the destruction of that army. But it didn't happen. Here in the next turn, they actually did stop the siege, and I thought, I'll just let them sit there in the countryside and see if they do gather up any more troops, because our garrison is getting stronger and stronger, so their chance of actually doing any damage is going down and down, so there's no real problem with just letting them hang around. And here we are in the turn after that, and they just didn't do anything, so I decided, right, we'll go in and get rid of them now, especially because, as you can see at the bottom there, Constanza's army is now back to full strength, plus his troops have upgraded armour and shields thanks to the local infrastructure, the blacksmiths, that the Western Roman Empire had constructed. The rebel army is an interesting mix of all different unit types, like one of each type of unit, which is a really bad setup since that means they don't have enough of any particular type to do any strategies and they get wiped out immediately by Constance's far superior force, although the garrison coming from Carol has managed to lose one of its units there somehow, despite the rest all being fine. Anyways, that's the end of that rebellion. The islands are secure once again. Public order still going to be a bit of an issue around the islands, though. But we can't really spend too long with our main force sitting here in Carolus controlling public order since Constance has plenty more adventures that he wants to go on. So what I decided to do was to take Tullus and move him from his garrison at Palma over to Carolus. This is because if there's another rebellion, having troops in the sardinia Corsica combination of islands is better since they can move between each other over the land bridge at the top. And at Palma will just have to sit off on the edge and be a little bit more isolated and we'll hope that there'll never be any rebels on that island. So Constance is going to take to the ships with Aurelianus and sail out while Tullus comes in, this is in the next turn now, to garrison at Carolus. And there's another interesting thing that Tullus really needs to get on with. Since he's now been given the important job of guarding the whole province, he's probably going to need some more troops. So finally, he's given the authority to start recruiting some proper Roman legionaries of his own. We've just finished constructing the legionary barracks here as well, so we can take advantage of that. And the blacksmith for the upgraded equipment to start giving Tullus a proper powerful army. So now in the next turn, moving on very fast, you can see Tullus still recruiting up his troops, plenty more to come. So he'll just sit there for a while. So let's focus on what Constans is up to. He and Aurelianus sneaking over, of course, to the Italian peninsula to follow up on the reports from the Western Roman Emperor that Rome itself is in big trouble. We can actually already see the flashes through the fog of war, which indicates it's under some sort of attack already. Now I saw that the garrison at Neopolis was relatively small, so we have the option of landing there and just taking that settlement right now. I wanted to put Constans onto land first though, because I don't want to make a full port assault, and as I do, it actually does reveal what the problem with Rome is. It's the Visigoths, a very historical problem for the Romans here. They've got Rome under siege, and there's only a few turns left from Rome's supplies, so they can't hold that much longer. The Visigoth army looking pretty strong, but perhaps not strong enough to actually assault the walls and take it. So right now, Aurelianus and Constans will quickly storm Neapolis to gain a foothold on the peninsula. Only a couple of units in there to defend, so they just disappear immediately, with Aurelianus leaving leading the attack by sea, since Constance is out of movement points right now, luckily he can still come in to reinforce somehow. So we'll occupy the town, this is now our base on the peninsula, but uh, we don't really care about Neapolis, the main mission now is to follow up on Constance's promise to the Emperor that he is going to be the one to save Rome. Traders told us more than my own spies, and soon the full picture of Constance's disappearance was laid bare. While it was a strike against me personally to have my own son disobey me and his people so flippantly, it comes as ample consolation that he has saved so many new lands from the collapse of the Empire. The Senate saw the positives only in the shadow of the negatives and rallied hard to demand all forces return home. Even old allies seemed to turn against me. Things had spun out of control, they insisted. But when I told them that I had just received a letter from my son informing me that he had captured the Emperor and that he was sailing to shield Rome itself from a barbarian invasion, then no senator of any persuasion could say anything. So we need to save Rome and the Visigoths now are going to be in trouble because it's the next turn, Constance has got his movement points back and we're going to declare war on them as a faction. This is going to bring in some other factions as well, the Ostrogoths for one, but also Macedonia, which is a separatist Roman faction of its own over to the east, which must have aligned itself with the Goths as they came through their lands. So I'm not going to try calling in any of my allies to help. You can see I'm allied to a random African faction in order to help out with diplomacy. 
diplomacy, but the Caledonians, as my puppet state, are forced to join this war, not that it will have any impact on them, most likely. So we move up to the Visigoths, and they simply move out of the way. They don't want to fight Constance's army. And now this leaves us in the zone of control of Rome, which means now we actually have to attack Rome to get out of the zone of control. At the very least, we have to lay siege to it and retreat. But upon laying siege, you can see the garrison is so small that we actually have a gigantic advantage against the capital of the empire. Actually, for some reason, one of the least defended Roman settlements we've seen so far. So since the Romans are failing so much to defend their own capital, it seems only right that Constance bust his way in and put up some far superior defences of his own. Since we're at war with the Visigoths, we may have to worry about their other armies coming to attack Neapolis, but ultimately the loss of Neapolis wouldn't matter if we can hold Rome. They actually don't do anything in their turn, we see another one of their battered armies appearing down there to the south. Nothing special though, we also are going to get a defensive alliance with another African faction. We had the Morians before, now we're getting the Gaetulians. This basically just means we don't have to worry at all about the whole southern front of the Mediterranean since they're going to be cooperative with us and we can focus on the detailed matters in Italia. So nothing from the Macedonians and then suddenly Hispania, my puppet state, appears to attack Palma. It seems they are looking for some revenge for what we did to their city when we we passed through and now the Constans lookalike has brought a massive army of spearmen to not only betray us but also undermine our efforts to build a base in the Mediterranean by attacking Palma which is the location of our legionary barracks so we do need to hold it in order to continue the recruitment into Tullus's army. So the balance bar doesn't look good, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything for a naval defence as we've seen loads of times before in this series, especially if you can go out and just kill their commander before the battle starts. So we'll have a go at that. We only have two ships and they only have half of their crew and the enemy ships were bunched together, meaning their missile troops could hit my men as we came in. So we actually lost a few marines even before the battle got started. You can see tons of projectiles coming down there. The marines throwing darts at the enemy, not really going to do anything. But both ships do make it to the enemy commander's ship and jump in to start the battle. The enemy seasickness reducing the strength of the Palatina Guards and already Palatina Guards aren't really a very good unit so that's going to work in our men's favour. They are outnumbered quite heavily by the enemy which doesn't help and unfortunately for us one of the two units of marines actually routed after just a few seconds of combat and uh, for whatever reason, perhaps this caused the route, their ship just sunk on its own next to the ship they were boarding. So that certainly does not help. And the remaining ship now going to be under a lot of pressure as they are totally outnumbered by the enemy. There's still a chance that they could kill the enemy's commander in this melee, but the commander wasn't fighting at the front. So they'll have to go through a lot of enemies to do it. And it turns out they're not prepared to do that. They just rout after a few more moments of this combat and start to jump back onto their own ship. At least their ship didn't randomly sink they've got that going for them one of the crew actually decides to jump back into the enemy's ship after the order to leave was given but he realized that was probably a bad idea at the last second and came back so he will be included in the successful escape of those remaining marines but this does mean we have not defeated the enemy's commander and their attack will go ahead as planned so now it's up to our garrison to try and hold the enemy off we can do the other trick of using the barricade to kill some enemies using missile weapons. We only have the Legio with their darts, which doesn't really do very much, but we do rout one unit of combat defensive spears, and an exposed unit of enemy archers is going to fall prey to our cavalry emerging from around the corner up there. The problem with this enemy army is that because it's mostly spearmen, our cavalry aren't going to be anywhere near as effective as they usually are in these port defense battles, so we're going to have to just get out of the way and try and look for openings maybe to probe the enemy enemy and try and sneak through to attack weak units or overwhelm spear units with rear attacks. So the enemy's infantry will be able to just go to work on our infantry. And here they actually moved up their pikemen to fight without their pikes, so that was kind of them, an easy start. But over here on the southern approach you can see just loads of units piling against one of mine. We do have slightly superior units to them because we have the Auxilia Palatina, which are an upgraded version of common defensive spears, but the enemy's numbers are overwhelming. And they're also being careful not to actually deploy all of their units into those melee, so that meant my cavalry struggled to find chances to get rear attacks. Really annoying. Here I did get one chance, and I attacked three units of spears with one of scout equites, and as you can see, nothing happens. It's nothing at all like the case where the enemy's general is already dead, and an attack like this would just destroy all three of those units by making them route well surrounded and then they'll just die because they are being attacked by our units as they try to escape. 
uh, yeah, nothing at all happens. So our cavalry will just have to get out of there and the fight will continue as before. Now against those axemen who were scaring my cab off, I charged them, killed half of them with the charge, and then they sat there wavering. I thought I would probably just take them out in a second. Now, as you can see, this fight actually just went on for ages, and the wavering just continued. They were considering leaving for the entire fight, but they never quite did it. Really annoying, and we can be certain if the enemy's general was dead, that wouldn't have happened. The tower there, probably killing just as many of my own men as theirs, and not really helping, but we've lost that fight as well. So, it looks like things aren't going too well for Palmer. Lies did they feed these people. What glories did they promise? What should I promise then to make them give up this madness? We should tell them of how we were once promised a share of the greatness of Britannia's saviors. Those of us they did not kill were promised that anyway. And then the share grew ever smaller until they simply ignored everything we said and left us to enjoy the barbarians they deliberately drew to our gates. Perhaps this island is not long enough forgotten by the madman Constance. Were they charmed by his good looks? Is it that petty a thing for which they will all die? Well, at least we can all take heart that their deaths will remind the world that trust is a thing of substance, not just a bundle of words spoke to a kneeling man. For our troops inside the town, it's now just a desperate grind, and here you can see those pikemen who were fighting with their daggers and melee have managed to pull themselves back and get their pikes together. So now their phalanx is sticking through the front line of the enemy's infantry to provide some kind of support. Don't know how well that works in terms of the game's mechanics, but it looks good at least. And some of my men seem to have got themselves onto watch duty and aren't paying any attention to the actual fight, but soon enough they're going to have to get drawn into it. Over here, another big blob as the fight just continues. The enemy obviously have us quite far outnumbered so over time they'll slowly be working through our troops but I did get this nice opportunity here on the northern approach where the three units fighting with my spearmen managed to all take surprisingly high casualties to the point where I thought another cavalry attack might actually do something this time and indeed it did now that the enemy were weaker even though the cavalry attack doesn't really inflict many casualties the morale penalty for being rear flanked was just about enough to tip a couple of these units over the edge we've got two of them there really needed that last one to go fighting in a slightly more prolonged melee with cavalry not very nice but it goes as well in the end and all three of those units can be shattered now by the cavalry by chasing them so that'll take them out of the fight which is great mainly because it frees up those 20 or so of my men to go and join one of the other fronts where they will be sorely needed. Now here we are a few minutes later on the eastern approach where some of the enemy seem to have disappeared and that's because they're now out here in the middle of nowhere. I use my archers to kind of lure out some of the enemies into melees that they would win but by taking them away from the melees they were already in that gave me this opportunity for the cavalry to sneak in and rear attack the soldiers already here. The enemy's pikemen who were here actually routed before this happened, leaving only a couple of the more heavily armed units who, now that they are rear flanked, decide to stop fighting. They actually shatter, and that's because at the very same moment, the enemy general dies. This was very unexpected. The enemy general was fighting in this mass melee, which the enemy were about to win. But with the death of that general, we see three units right there immediately shatter. The other ones have gone down to it wavering and may not even last the rest of that melee. An incredible turn of events happening by sheer luck there was no intention to defeat the general he just happened to push his way through that melee to the front so now all I need to do is focus entirely on attacking this big blob and uh, to make a kind of meta point I was kind of outraged by this prospect that now I can actually win because all I need to do is cavalry rear attack that blob and it'll chain route because some of them are already wavering and then their army losses will be huge after that point and the rest will just leave and I didn't really want to win because I thought it would be <laughs> outrageous and I knew that people would complain if I won yet another ridiculous battle that totally shouldn't be going my way so I gave myself the handicap of only allowing the cavalry to walk towards this engagement so they very slowly walked their way up towards the back of the enemy and actually when they arrived the enemy did something a tiny bit more intelligent than usual they actually pulled their unit out to fight with the cavalry before I ordered a charge so I decided to just leave them to it probably could have still got the cavalry out of the melee and done the rear charge I decided to see what the outcome of this now would be because the enemy are wavering but so am I 
My troops were virtually destroyed, in fact, barely any of them left, and after a while of grinding combat, we do actually manage to successfully lose the battle, which is almost more challenging than winning at this point. It's a valiant defeat. I decided that Hispania probably does deserve this. Let's give the AI a tiny break and give Constanz a thorn in his side now. Hispania will be taking Palma off our hands. We've lost everything. They've managed to lose their generals, so the Constanz lookalike is no more, and they lost a decent number of units, and the units that survived took loads of casualties as well, so it'll take them a while to get back to battle readiness, which at least means they're not going to go on to immediately cause even more trouble. But we are going to want to take Palma back both because of the economic and regional stability reasons, but also it had my legionary barracks, as I mentioned earlier, and this leaves Tullus without his army fully constructed. His army is basically the same size as it was before, only now it has higher quality troops. The question is, can he go and take Palma back as it stands? Because it's going to take him a few turns to get there, and we don't really know how much effort the Hispanians will put into repairing their force and defending that settlement. What I decided to do was just hire a couple of mercenaries available here, in Sardinia and then we'll move right on over and do the slower approach on the assault because I didn't feel like making a naval assault on Palma. I want to go over land and we can actually land on the other side of the island fortunately enough. So we'll land there and then walk over for a standard siege assault. It's going to take us a couple of turns so we'll see whether Hispania really puts up a fight to continue to hold it or whether Tullus has an easy time getting it back and then can continue recruiting his new army. So now switching back to Constanz. He has prepared a couple of rams and a load of ladders ready to attack Rome. The army inside smaller than him and the regiment's already damaged so really the challenge just getting into Rome once he's in it's basically going to be his so it looks like the famous Roman legionaries are finally coming back to where all of that began. I'll ride with some haste for the rocking of the ship makes for a vile sickness if one does anything but stare at the horizon. We sail to Palma, where weeks ago the local people died for the right to have their families protected by the Legion. It's the same out here as it is in Britannia. Things are so unsure that the ultimate price is a small one to pay to give those left behind a chance at a lasting peace. With the price paid, I must deliver. I and I alone, it seems, for Constans cannot separate the notion of saving the people of this empire with making them bow to him. I would complain to Constantinus, but I fear he would entirely agree with his son's mad judgement. Again, I must resign myself to picking up the mess and praying for a turn of fate. Praying to any god that will listen at this point. So our troops prepare to storm the walls of Rome and they've got the equipment ready to do it. Here a gigantic ram being pushed by these legionaries is going to creep slowly up towards the gates where our main assault is going to be focusing on. Going to try and get through that main gate on the northern wall of Rome. We've got plenty of ladders nearby to support that attack as well. Just want to put those men on the walls to distract the enemy if they can basically get them away from the gates so everyone else can pour through. Luckily those ladders clipping through all the ruined buildings on the outskirts of the city. And there was also a breach in the wall already and you can see I've ordered one unit of legionaries to just run through it. There are enemies defending it though when I was playing I couldn't see that because of line of sight so I'm basically just sending that unit in to see what it can do by sneaking through the breach and seeing what happens and you can trust in the legionaries to do okay in pretty much any situation so no real problems with just sending men in blindly like that on their own. Also making another attack on the western gate of the city with three units as a distraction in order to draw some enemies away from the main fight. So those legionaries come through the breach and take a volley of javelins from the enemy's equites and they return the volley much more effectively and now rush into combat with no hesitation. There's also a unit of legio competensis here who are throwing darts into my men but their massive shields and armor and the fact that darts don't have the same armor piercing capabilities of javelins means that's not really going to do anything main problem both for them and for most of our legionaries actually is going to be the gigantic towers defending the walls which rapidly fire out deadly bolts you can see a trail of bodies behind the ram where the tower's just been slamming them and for all of our legionaries fighting in the line of sight of the towers this is going to inflict heavy casualties the enemy kindly opened the gate as we arrive it looks like it was actually the citizens who opened the gate for us perhaps wishing that constans and his forces would come in and defend rome rather than the incompetent and absent emperor uh, unfortunately 
Unfortunately, our ram was destroyed, but it managed to also destroy the open gate somehow before that happened. So now the ram magically disappearing actually frees up space for our men to advance, which is probably faster than actually pulling the ram out of the way. So that's quite nice. Our legionaries charge in and start engaging the enemy's infantry, defending the streets on the other side of the gate. They've also got cavalry being used for static defense, the worst thing they could do with their cavalry. The enemy's infantry isn't very good, which isn't going to help them. And for these men up on the walls, these archers, they're going to have a bad day as well as our legionaries start swarming up on there. One of the ladders actually was destroyed by the enemy's towers, splitting that unit in half, which is annoying. They'll have to find their way back to each other. But the guys who did make it up onto the wall already come down the stairs to rear attack the troops already engaged by the guys who came through the breach. And a second unit comes through the breach as well. And they're going to go all the way around and rear attack those units. So we'll totally surround the defenders there. And back over at the main gate, it's just a grind. No real tactics available, but my man being superior in melee should slowly push forwards and gain more and more ground, especially because those troops up on the wall can come to support. Here's that rear attack on the guys fighting underneath this enemy tower and the rear attack causes the enemy's cavalry to leave immediately and puts the enemy's legio competitensis in a very sticky situation outnumbered and surrounded by superior troops they are really just fighting to the death at this point surprised they didn't just rout it's all over for them now my other attack on the western gate did succeed, we got in, we captured the gate uh, with enormous losses to all of those units, you can see piles of bodies from the process of capturing the gatehouse, bodies outside and loads of bodies on the bridge from pushing that ram up and uh, one unit of the legionary is actually taking huge losses there as you can see. So we took a lot of losses and didn't really do anything with that attack because it didn't distract the enemy because they didn't try to stop us. So overall I don't think that attack was worth it in retrospect, but anyway back where the main fight is going to be going on. Our troops are preparing for a rear attack on the main bulk of the enemy's force. Then we try to counter charge there, very enthusiastically charging all the way through our ranks to the other side. Our men very uh, chivalrously letting the enemy go back to their ranks before they try and fight them, kind of them. But now that chivalry is going to be thrown out the window as they come in for a slaughter. The enemy's units are all scattered about the place, making it super easy to rear attack. Javelins narrowly missing my own troops there as they fly over to hit the enemies sitting on the flank of the gate. And those guys are going to be able to outflank my units as they come through the gate, but that's not going to do them much good as we now again have numerical advantage and skill advantage. It's time to slaughter the last remaining defenders loyal to the old Roman order and Rome is very promptly going to be falling to us. Down they go, leaving actually only one enemy unit. I thought that was the last one when I was playing, but there is one more over on the capture point, just a unit of spears, enemy's captain. I'm going to fight them with my own spears, the spear cohort superior to the enemy's Palatino Auxilia, so they'll just fight their way through them. And the only interesting part of this little battle was that it was taking place on the edge of this little race courtyard, and the men had a little bit of a hard time dealing with this because they didn't want to go around, so many of them decided to just jump off the edge. A pretty deadly fall, especially weighed down by all that armor. I imagine that's quite a painful drop into battle. And then my men suddenly surged forwards and uh, luckily for them they can <laughs> scramble up the wall or something and teleport their way into the courtyard and that will allow us to surround the enemy. Uh, the replay actually corrupted at this point because I can see the fights going slightly differently to how it did when I played and uh, probably because of that corruption it now freezes but uh, I think you can see where that was going the enemy units actually just routed there anyway so in about three more seconds of the replay we would have won so that is the last of Rome's defenders. Our troops now are going to be rushing forwards into this courtyard and uh, right next to this courtyard nothing other than the Imperial Palace itself. Mere moments from being captured by our men that Western Roman Empire flag is going to be coming down. Constans is home. For those not paying close attention to the politics of the Empire, the arrival of troops right out of the mosaics and murals of the city streets must have been quite a shock. Only a few knew the details in full and took to the walls to challenge the approaching legions. Within just a few hours, though, they had all but given up, and Constans marched with his troops below arcs of triumph fashioned for men like him many generations ago. For the majority of the city's huge population, it was not so important who walked through the halls of the Imperial Palace, so long as the armies of barbarians were expelled from Italia. Calls to this effect were launched at Constans from the moment he was in earshot of the walls, but he was not one to let the wishes of others decide his path.
so thanks for watching, we'll see if we can hold Rome and work out what to do with it and see what else Constans has his eye on in the next episode of Fields of Mars.